Welcome back to Maths with Mrs J. This will be our final video in our series on functions. In this video, I want to talk about inverse functions and relations and how to find them. At the end of our previous video, we were talking about composite functions. We happened upon two functions where if you were to do f of g, you would get x. If you were to do g of f, you would get x. And I said that they are inverse functions of each other. The whole idea of an inverse function is that it undoes what has been done to the x. Just like when you solve equations really um, in year seven and eight and nine, the idea of undoing what has been done to the x. Graphically, what's going to happen is your function and its inverse will be mirror images about the line y equals x. We should know by now, here's one example, that y equals e to the x and y equals natural log of x are inverse functions. They are doing the opposite thing. Whether I were to do this function first and then do this, or do this function first and then take natural log of it, I would just get x. So that is an example of one pair of inverse functions. I also want to point out at this point that sometimes you might start with a function and when you do the inverse, it might not be a function. If you start with a parabola, for example, right, that's not a very nice looking parabola, but it, that is a function, right? The vertical line test works. If you were to um, do its mirror image about the line y equals x, you're going to get something on its side like this. That will not be a function. Sometimes it might be necessary if you want it to be a function to specify which section of the square root you're going to be taking if you're going to be doing that sort of thing there with parabolas. Um, also to point out that because you're swapping your x's and your y's, the domain of your original function will become the range of your inverse function and the range of your original function will become the domain of your inverse function. How do we go about doing it? Quite easy. Rewrite any function notation, whether it be f of x, g of x, h of x, whatever, as y. Swap your x and y. Then you're going to use algebra to rearrange to make y the subject. Once you have y the subject, you then call that your f inverse of x. So let's start here, relatively simple to start with. So y equals 5x minus 2. So for our inverse, we're going to have x equals 5y minus 2. We want to get the y on its own, so add 2 and divide by 5. And lo and behold, we have f inverse of x is x plus 2 on 5. Just a little side note here. When you were in early um, high school and you were learning to solve equations like that, you would have added two to both sides, then divided by five. Look what you're doing here, all right? Inverse. Okay, let's press on. So y equals square root x minus four on five. So for the inverse, we're gonna swap. What are we gonna do? We'll obviously multiply by five square both sides and add your four. And um, so this will be our F inverse. So it's interesting, the inverse here is what you call a normal parabola, All right, 25X squared plus four. This will look like this, very steep parabola with a y-intercept of 4, what we started with was something like this, but we just started with the positive square root part of it. All right. Okay. Let's press on and have a look at some slightly more difficult examples. The method is still the same. It's just the algebra is a little bit more tricky here. So... Just bear in mind, ln means natural log. I'd be inclined to actually change that into log to base e here, just to make our work ahead of us a little bit easier. So we've got y equals two 
log to base e of x minus 3. So for our inverse, obviously, we're swapping. Don't forget your 2. Divide by 2. Then I would go obviously from that to index notation. So y minus three is e to the x on two. So y is obviously e to the x on two plus three. So that's obviously your f inverse. This one here, this is what you would call a normal parabola. Okay, and look something like that. When we do the inverse of this, we are not going to get a function because the horizontal line test doesn't work. So when you turn it on its side, when you flip it about the line y equals x, you will not get a function. If you really want to have a function, you'll just have to take either the top half or the bottom half. Let me show you how you go about this one. This one's a little bit more tricky to work with. And some people probably won't be very impressed, but you're going to have to use completing the square. Okay, we're going to add seven to both sides and leave a bit of a gap. If we want to get y on its own, we really need to complete the square. We need to get that into a bracketed expression. So what are we going to add to both sides? We're going to add nine. To both sides. So this is x plus 16 and this will be y plus 3 all squared. Taking square root of both sides now, this is where you can tell that it's not going to be a function because if you do plus or minus square root, you're automatically getting two possible x uh, y values for each x value. So that's your y plus 3. So y is this minus 3. Uh, so that's your F inverse. And as I said over the page, your domain of your function becomes your range of your inverse. Your range of your function becomes your domain of your inverse. Notice how here we notice that we're going to get x values that have to be greater than or equal to negative 16. Otherwise, we can't take the square root of it. This last one's a little bit more tricky, but it's perfectly doable. We just need to follow the same process and just keep our wits about us. All right, so we've replaced our function notation by y. Now we're going to swap for our inverse. So 4y minus 2 over 6y plus 1. We're going to multiply both sides by the 6y plus 1 and expand out. Because we want to get the y on its own, we really want to get all the y terms over one side and everything else over the other. So I'm going to bring my x plus 2 there and bring this uh, 6xy over here by subtracting. Then I can take out a y as a common factor. And now I can divide both sides by this expression here. So y will be x plus 2 over 4 minus 6x. So that will be our f inverse. So just bear in mind that procedure there. Don't let it phase you. It's not terribly difficult, but some people get a bit confused as to how to get the y on its own. This is the way to do it. Get all your y's on the one side, take out your y as a common factor and then divide through.